Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary MTU Don't Draw Let's Play. We pick things up for episode 2 from turn 2 in the autumn season of 190. So we spent most of last episode checking out the new characters and getting uh, kind of situated in our starting position and now we're going to plan out what we want to do in our early game. So ideally, as we disbanded everyone, we're going to focus on building up. Uh, for these first few turns. We also have your economy growth going on right now, so that's going to work very well. And we're also going to explore different ways to uh, pick up Maton's territory. Uh, we want to keep him friendly until we can marry him, or not him, but his daughter and his son. But it's going to be a little bit tricky because um, he might declare war on us for one, and he also might get wiped by Gongdu, so we have to kind of balance what we really want to do here. And if he gets wiped, of course, by another AI faction, there's a chance he could join us, but that's only a chance. Getting his characters through marriage or spies are more guarantees. Now, the situation is also our daughter is a little bit young. She's only 12 years old. So she's not going to come of age until four years into the game. Whereas if we look at his family tree, Ma Cha is going to come of age in two years. Um, that's really quick. So we're going to have to either adopt a lady uh, to get the fake marriage through or hope he doesn't get married in two years, which usually, you know, he doesn't usually get married. So we should be OK. Uh, the daughter is 11, so that's five years in. We'll keep an eye out for that. The only person he could possibly marry uh, his son away is Han Sui's daughter. She's single. So maybe we could look to set her up with a marriage earlier on to make sure this doesn't happen. That's something we can consider when Ma, Chao com when Ma, Teng comes, when Ma Chao comes of age. Our brother is single, so that's, that's a possibility for sure. Anyways, uh, back to the task at hand. We are trying to take over a lot of these unclaimed territories and eventually absorb these uh, with money, obviously. Uh, it's not cheap, and I don't want these two general, this general here, to be able to do the job. So we, we saved him to get the movement, to get him to about here. I'm gonna start with the food. Even though it doesn't add anything to our money, it does provide essential food that can help us resist Cao Cao's scheme. Uh, Cao Cao's minus 20 food scheme is really powerful. And I believe it can only target factions who has less than 10 food. So if we can maintain our food at over 10, uh, we'll be safe. So we'll grab that first. We'll be recruiting one of the generals we got rid of their retinues uh, last turn. Anyone with reach? No. No, they don't have reach. Uh, then that's fine. It doesn't matter who. And we're going to recall Lu Bu, and he's going to pick up full movement. Which is not enough to reach the farm, but close enough. We'll get there next turn. Saves us a little bit of time. And then we're going to use your economy grows to start building. Now, luckily, we have a ton of territory spread around different commanderies. So every commandery will enjoy the minus one uh, construction time, minus 20% cost. And speaking of commanderies, Guo Si needs to come become administrator here. Obviously, he has a 5% from, I believe, Ambitious, 20% from Trust, and he can eventually pick up Intuition, which is a skill uh, that will give him 15% Industry, which is great for this commandery here. And if we take a quick look at his items, maybe there's something else we can squeeze. Oh, the bug is still there, where they're not going to show up in the character manual here. So we're just going to look at him here. Uh, so as administrator, three expertise is not bad. Resolve is also good for population growth, but I think we'll stick to the expertise at this point. Yeah. All right, we can't give him anything else yet. It's ambitious to give him 5%. Anyways, this makes things a little bit cheaper for us as we look to upgrade these places. And we'll start from the top. Jing Zhao. Jing Zhao has an empty slot. Uh, this will most definitely become a private workshop. Then we can start demolishing this for cash and then switch this to an inn. 
We have over 1 million population, which is great. means we get another build. Uh, we always have minus 1 construction time because we have the slave mobilization reform as our first one. Plus this one's minus 2. Ooh. Tough calls here. I think this will be plus 100. This will, this will be less than 100, actually. This will be 50 industry and 30 commerce which is not worth very much given that we haven't finished building our private workshop so we're just going to go with this same amount of turns this is also cheaper and uh, we'll get that going that finishes we pop it in right here and then we'll just level these up that'll be our early game city build here all the passes will ignore the upgrade except for maybe hungul pass because it's on the front lines one upgrade will give us two stacks of retinues instead of one uh, which is pretty big so we will spend a little cash there. Undine. So this is going to be our farm plus uh, industry income for the beginning. I think the build is going to be tax collection building. We'll stick with it since we get a level 2 one for free. We'll stick with land development. We'll probably put a state workshop here to synergize with this and possibly a private workshop to boost this or maybe a forge. This might just become a more utility commandery than anything else. Two turns. This will give us a hundred income increase. This will give us food. We also kind of need this. We can build that last. That's a four turn build. These are two turns. We'll build this first for money. And then when this completes, we'll build that. That can wait because we're going to take care of our food problem and all our other problems by raising taxes. Alright, that's all the money we have, perfectly spent, and we're going to go all the way up. And the reason why we want to do this is because we really want to fight rebels. Rebels in this game for us means we get Intimidation, 10 points for each rebel group we kill. That means we uh, essentially end up with the option to um, pick up, I don't know, uh, depending on how fast these rebels come, we can pick up multiples of um, in co cohesion, I think that's what's called in diplomacy. Imagine we have like six rebel spawn in a turn. That's two cohesions we can use on two targets and trade for resources and all that. It, it's really good. So we're definitely gonna try that out. We don't want any characters. We don't have any money. You can see all the negative popping up. On these gate passes, we can definitely balance them out a little. Uh, for example, we don't want a group of rebels to spawn here, for example, and we probably don't want a group of rebels to spawn here. Although we could. We could put one army here of three generals to fight both Sun Pass, Han Zhong, as well as Jing Zhao. This I don't want to mess with because we're not going to keep our army here. And the tricky part is these three groups. So maybe if I put an army here with maybe Zhang Liao, for example, because we did say we want to put him over here to help us defend. Then we could eventually have this group take care of three groups of rebels as well. So we can farm, as I said, six right here, seventh one right here. That's just 70 points of intimidation um, frequently from rebel farming. And that's just a huge boon to us. All right, no turncoats, so we're good. And I think that's all we can do. Um, I doubt we can make any good diplomatic deals given that we don't have an army on the field. So our military strength is going to be, you know, down the drain here. Yeah, I think that's all we can really do. Let's continue here. All right, turn two of our economy grows. Ooh, wooden dog. I know who that's going on. So do we bump him to potentially 4k? No. So if that's not the case, then, oh, he's using expertise. That's fine. Let's just hang on to each. It's being wasted a little bit, but um, I don't want to really switch up too many things now. Because then both will go on cooldowns. It wouldn't be pretty for the bonuses we'll receive. All right, you leveled up. I really want to get flexibility, so this would be the fastest way for us to do that. He's probably going to get there. I guess it took him, what, three turns to get to 3,000? 
So we're looking at turn 8, perhaps, uh, for him to hit the next tier. We have 8,900 in the bank. We need to build it in. Do we want to keep upgrading this? Because this is the front line, basically. Let's see if we have money left over. We're not going to rush this. We're not going to rush this. We're not going to rush this. So we do have plenty of money left over. Let's colonize first. This will cost us 4,000. And the upgrade will cost us... Uh, I'm going to rush this just to get this going. And then we can use the last turn of your Kami Girls to build this into a small city. We'll keep him on the field, walk him over here, do a flip, and then have someone go grab us uh, the horse pasture and so forth. We'll slowly colonize everything here. Any potential turncoats? No. And no new characters. In spring, we should get an interesting roster of characters available to us. Hope we get lucky. We should probably upgrade it one more time. It is the cheapest to do it now. And we do have the cash. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, Ma Tung has held. It doesn't mean he will just win. It just means, you know, he kept his city. Good for him. No big deal. Uh, we will look into grabbing this once we get our first spawn of rebels. Because as I mentioned, we can use those rebels uh, to kind of trade for these resources. It would get us at least 16 points, make things a little bit cheaper for us. So let's continue here. Faction Council. Oh, we did forget to do one thing. There was something that I wanted to do with flipping Lu Bu into different positions. Um, I don't like these. Maybe if we change him into different positions, he will give us something different. Nope. Still raids. Um, not cool. I could add someone else to our court uh, to get more interesting proposals. Because they are quite helpful. It will cost us a bit of salary. Ah, Zheng Jiang has ditched her character. Is she willing to spy for... Oh, wait. Wait, 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 that was turncoat. She's willing to turncoat. Okay, we're grabbing her. Uh, I was thinking that she's willing to spy from joining our roster. That means she's not a spy as well, but that's even better. We pick up another... Oh, that's... That's generic for bandits, right? I was confused for a second. I was like, wait. I don't remember a special one like that. Cordial is really good for commerce. We could stash him as administrator. Or we can just remember that he's decent and look at him later. Ah, Fanchuo, another one of the... Actually, he will be one of the big three. It will be him, Guo Si, Li Jue. But then he gets killed by, I think, Li Jue. So off goes his head. Uh, generic in the game. Uh, I'm not interested in grabbing him early on. He does have fondness towards us, which is interesting. Uh, it makes sense. Historically, he does belong to us. Let's spend this money first. Let's not miss out on one of these MTU characters. I know they have another one in the faction, and they might have trouble keeping people happy. Which is why and they might be, you know, disloyal or have a bad trait like that, which opens up the door for us to grab them. So we can try to grab him as well before we extract her. They have no spy defense, which is pretty typical. And we're going to use this on him, dropping him to 25. We have no idea if he's willing to join us at this level. We can definitely throw a discredit faction to make sure. It'll take a few turns. And then we can extract her after that. Maybe we can think about investing in a spy. Oh, that depends on reforms, right? Hmm. Because we can't really reach Grandmaster anytime soon. Well, speaking of reform, it is spring. And we do start out with slave mobilization, as I mentioned. It's quite useful. 
Uh, it's not the worst one to start out with, but it doesn't lead uh, anywhere important early on. And our decision, I think, still comes down to whether we want to focus on more of a, a red or green type of approach, or maybe even a tax collection approach because we do want rebels. But raising tax rate can solve that already, so I don't think we need to go down this way yet. Uh, it will become helpful for the corruption reduction, but I think typically we go for the Onyx Dragon Rush just because we don't have a good unique range unit and also we do have access to Silk, um, which you know would get all the building upgrades through this route here. We do have access to a trade port, which would get all its building upgrade. Uh, we have a bunch of commanderies that we're going to set up as uh, sort of industry and commerce commanderies and getting spy reforms to get another spy position would also be very helpful. So we also got to look into getting a school. Uh, maybe next spring we'll cheat out a school just to get that going. Getting that one extra trade route might not mean we have a trade partner. Most likely will not mean we have a trade partner, so that's not good. Uh, of these positions, the bonuses they bring is just not enticing enough. This one's probably the only one I can kind of swallow in terms of what it brings. Um, maybe we can give it to her just because she's not exactly satisfied right now. And there could be a, satisfa a satisfaction issue with her. She's also ranked 3. We will spend only 250 extra. Uh, basically, the salary level for these positions will always be 350. So whatever their current is, it will increase that amount. The fact that she is currently at you know 100 is the best we can do. If we do a family member, you see that we're actually going to boost it by 350, which is totally not worth. And then she can also level up in this position. She can help everyone else level up. All the MTU characters need to level up to pick up more unique skills. So I think we can talk ourselves into this. It's money well spent. And hopefully she'll bring... Character marked and actively tracked. Track movement of enemy, enemy faction leader. I've never seen this one. Oh, domain personality reroll. Temperamental is not that bad. Although we get rid of the minus three public order, which we we actually want to keep. Can we can we get it on someone else? We have a plenty of bad characters to reroll. Come on, I believe in you. Cowardly, also not the worst. Come on, we got we got other we got other candidates here. Our wife, you got something to say about our wife? Cruel and arrogant, but she's not in the position of leader. Give us like. Dong Zhuo himself or Lu Bu. Okay, there we go. We can get rid of Disloyal, which would be great because then we don't have to worry about a lot of the satisfaction issues. Let's do it. 500 to reroll Lu Bu. Nothing spent here. Confirm. What did we pick up? Brave. Okay, that's that's great. That's uh, 12 points of resolve, a lot of health, plus 3 morale when commanding. No longer disloyal, feared, brave, formidable. Things are going great. All right, we're going to take the turn to walk here. And why don't you take turns with... Li Bu, since he does have reach. So he doesn't get the 25% from reach this turn, but at the start of next turn he would, and pass it on to whoever replaces him. Uh, the only downside is I cannot grab this and then swap as well, so next turn is going to be slow regardless. Ah, it's fine. I already kind of made that move, so not going to sweat it. Alright, waiting for Gondul to rebuild. Anyone approaching our side? So Dotong is spending this way instead of going to Loyang, which is fine. Is anyone approaching our wool pass here? This is the other pass that we should upgrade, so we should definitely consider it this turn, but there's a lot of things that we need to build this turn. This is the last turn of your economy grows. Over here, we are probably going to use it on things that take long turns, so like things like this. This maximizes kind of our savings in terms of both turns and income. Depending on if we have extra money, we can look at it again. We definitely want to do this, same logic. We are out of money. That is just a bit unfortunate. Colonizing does cost a bit of money. 
Can we gain any sort of cash from diplomacy? If anyone would like us, please raise your hand. That's a negative. And I don't think we can get any trade access at this point. There's just no one close enough to us. Although I'm curious, why can we not trade with the Han Empire? Does this not, this does not count as a road? I guess it doesn't. Yeah, that's, that's, it's a very useless vassal. Yeah, we just don't have an access and he has a free trade. I have a free trade. It's just, we don't have a route between us. All right, he would go from this port reaching most of the world until he gets blockaded here. So we desperately need to like expand down towards, like I said, Zangku to get a trade route. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate. Oh, we also spent money on spies, which is why we don't have enough money. Ooh, is that a gold bow? Wind of Taiyuan. Okay, I see what they did there. Base damage. It's low damage bow. Oh, it's higher armor piercing. It should be 1.1k base and 600 armor piercing for standard bow damage. Obviously, it's shaved off quite a bit of base, but increased a little bit of armor piercing to make up for it. So I think it lost 200 base, gained 112 armor piercing. So we're looking at 55% armor efficiency would be neutral, right? You got two extra damage against 55% um, armor because 200 times 55% is 110. You got 112 armor piercing to make up for it. Uh, the range is lower than most bows as well. 250 is the typical range. 220 here is definitely on the lower side, uh, but not gonna complain if we can pick oh she has snipe and 50% ammo wow scout of Taiwan 60 points minus 10% upkeep for range units she makes for a fun character for sure do we have vision on him we don't know what he does we don't know his items either hopefully we'll get to find out soon recently promoted is going away here eight points right now so we're hoping he will be at 17 in the future and we'll be able to grab him as well is she heir by any chance yes she's next in line so if we recall her he will lose some points although he could be made into heir which could also be very tricky here uh, we'll think about this later. This is not not the greatest issue right now We're just hoping to get some cash because we're Short on cash. Is there any type of deals we can do here? Where I can give you say food and you just give me a little bit of money Spare some change for us. What what can you? What can you do for us? I mean I would even take spare change like that just because we just need a little bit to upgrade the pass all right he likes us the most so if we give him food we're likely to get back the most no 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 no, not paying him he's paying us oh dear but he's he's not he's not ready to pay up what about Han Sui? where are you All right, how do you feel about that? Minus 17 on the opinion, and we're already at 21, so he's just not very happy about marrying his daughter to us, which is understandable. Our brother is kind of old. All right, Zhang Lu, our dear friend. Where did you go? Where did you go? How high can we push this? This 
Alright, just so we can get an extra build out of our discount. Alright, let's enter. Gong Sun Zan declare war on Liu Yu. We got schemed again. Another! It's been five turns already. Wait, this can be on constant cooldown? Is it five turns of effect and five turns of cooldown? Uh, we're gonna continue on as the Prime Minister. We'll pick up prestige for this. We will lose some diplomatic standings and increase satisfaction, increase peasantry income. It's it's a good deal, I think, overall. It's not like the other factions will like us anyways. So we do have money, you know. We, we're making good money. It's just we're also spending good money. Alright, she's just waiting for points. He only lost one point from recently promoted. Interesting. Okay. Don't rat, right. Where are we going to get rebellions? Because I feel like it's coming. Undine is going to get one first. Okay, so we're going to need to raise an army. Domain, how close are you to picking up the level up? Not close enough, right? As we said, probably turn 8. Luckily, maybe turn 7. Uh, which is just not enough for this rebellion. So we're going to have to spend redeployment on someone. Let's make it a cheap someone. You. You're cheap. And they don't have to like each other. They just have to take care of the rebels when they spawn. And we'll be able to maintain our intimidation. Gonna boost this first. Now we're gonna build things a little bit more expensive, but it still needs to be built, so we will build it. Yeah, I think we're fine. He's gonna move and then do the deployment trick with nobody because there's no one available. Maybe he can be recalled for now. We don't need him here just yet. Oh, tilted the screen. I guess we could have recalled him to fight this, but it's nice to have generals without, um, you know, red news to kind of rotate around. All right, we're good to go. Let's continue. Han Sui and Ma Teng broke up. We picked up Growing Might, which is not planned, because we had to hire three generals here. I guess we will just not have this bonus, 10% extra replenishment when we do recruit our first army, which is not anytime soon. Alright, our early game missions are over. We just want to be efficient with our time here, so... Let's pick this up so we can start spawning horses. Two turns... Uh, depends on how much money we have left over. The item's bad, so we're just going to delegate this. If they don't die, it's actually better because we get two fights, that's 20, but they die. So for us, it's free money, free experience, and uh, free intimidation. Alright, so he's got what we need him to do for the capture chance, that we're going to have to use him soon as well. Um... We might swap him out. I'm gonna recall her. 
Maybe have her do the assignment that he's doing. Undine's gonna have another rebellion before anyone else have a rebellion themselves. So he's gonna stay here. And we're gonna cancel this assignment since he's got what we want and he can help us capture enemy uh, generals in this fight because then we can get their items. All right, that's done. Buildings. Reform locked already. Okay, we, we need to get the reform for both of these buildings next time. I don't think we want to upgrade anymore. It's just too pricey at this point. We'll do this. We can rush it next turn and then build this without delay. Yep, he's ticking down just as planned. I could just extract her right now and count on this without waiting so long. And we can use her earlier, which I'm really down for. Cause it's gonna take her a few turns to come back as well. He's gonna take below 20. Oh no, he lost the six points because of the air being gone. So who's gonna be air? It could be anyone, cause for bandits there's no restrictions. It could be him, it could be him. If he gets made air, that could be a problem. But we can't really bypass that unless we get another spy slot in which we're not gonna do anytime soon. So just fingers crossed that she doesn't make the right character into air. Because he's currently Incense Master, so he has a position right now, so it's not like he doesn't have one. Alright, we'll just hang out here. 5,000 remaining. We're going to have to do that next turn. So let's just keep the money. I think we, we're going to need it, so let's continue. We got schemed again. Okay, plus 50% right new upkeep. Once again, the game is telling us don't build your first army yet. As long as we're not getting hit with a food one yet, we're fine. Please work. Yes, it worked. It worked. So I'm assuming he didn't get to ma get made into a uh, next in line. Ah, yes. She made Chen Chong the next in line. Big mistake. That was her chance to stop us from grabbing him. Um, now we just want to swap some points. And just extract him. That way we pick him up. Let's take a look at what he has and everything. He's on the map right now, so we don't have to wait till he comes over. No gold items. That's a little sad. One eye bandit is a total of... 55 points. Okay, we lose 5 points of expertise because we have one eye. Ignore forest penalty. So that's pretty bad. Plus 8% melee armor piercing damage, 48 armor base, 18 resolve. Okay, not too special, but maybe he has really good unique skills. Unexpected strike. Enable if morale is higher than 50%, health is above 50%, double damage. Oh, so he's healthy and also high morale. We're looking at double damage plus hidden. We're always going to be invisible. Who can defend against which he cannot see? I thought we're the one eye bandit. I guess enemies are two eyes blind. Man, she has good stuff. I wonder if he stole some items from him because he's now heir. Not sure. Right, that's an unproven theory, but we're gonna snatch him. Reason's pretty simple. Now we have an empty slot to look for other turncoats. Domain finally leveled up. Finally pick up flexibility. It's going to be cheaper to summon people onto the field. People like her. Ah, oh, it's bounded. Okay. Let's see her skills. Marksman of Taiyuan. 5 use. Archery skill. 2 shots. Right, range damage base times 2. So basically 2 shots. But only one shot of the armor piercing? It's like Hail of Arrows, basically, but it's like... It's in between Hail of Arrows and Show of Force? That's my guess, just by looking at it? 
There also seemed to be a poison tick on it. It looks strong, basically. It looks strong. Uh, enables fire arrows on this skill as well. So basically a bandit character with fire arrows on poison arrows, I'm assuming, because they always have ruthlessness. Quick preparation gives night battle, which is great because otherwise we have to pick a, up to, oh, which is not available on a strategist tree. So basically she has night battle, makes her very strong there too. Increased speed, increased charge speed, increased melee attack rate, 50 meter radius, can target for generals. Passive buff, infinite durations, passes, is always on. Speeds up nearby generals. Not herself, but just other generals. Plus 25% melee attack rate. Interesting. I don't know. This this one feels a little strange. Obviously, for dueling buffs, speeding up melee attack rate is helpful. But the speed part is kind of interesting. Don't know what to make of that. For kiting? And charging in? Eh, I don't know. Uh, Stalker is the typical one. That's generic. Snipe. Right, so if she stays in the forest, she can have Snipe. This is this is definitely the most powerful one here. I might not be in a rush to pick this up, even though this gives Night Battle. We might just go top and grab these. Anyways, Great General. We'll try to make use of her. Our roster of uh, unique MTU generals grows. Um, I'm not interested in upgrading that. I am interested in keeping her busy for a little bit. And she can afford to level up now because she's holding the Grand Tutor position. I really wonder what the Emperor can learn from her. It's, uh, it's an envious position to say the least. Alright, so this one is going to rebel and this one's going to follow suit soon. Oh, yeah, do people can- hold on. Let me spend this money here first. Get this done, get this going. And we said we want Dashu on the field for capture. He has to lead. Now, Lu Bu is probably going to be better at capturing just because he's level 7. But we probably don't need to use him for this purpose. I'm going to just bring him out so that they can level up a little bit, fighting these rebels early on. Oh! We have a challenger approaches to Wu Pass. Good thing we didn't summon Li Bu. It's not Hula Pass, but it's close. They also don't have siege weapons, and they're also bleeding out due to the fact they have to travel quite far. They're leaving behind quite an exposed capital, to say the least. That's something for them to worry about. Good thing we upgraded it. Okay. Yeah, we don't have any more deployments, so we can't do much else there. He picked this up. We have 7,000 in the bank, which is quite a lot. Do we want to upgrade this anymore? It seems like no one's coming. Right? Seems like this is where the action is. Maybe we should upgrade this one one more time. Let's do it. Although his siege will stop it. Yeah, that's a waste of money at this point. Yeah, we can't lose. Let's continue. Ah, sneaky Yuan Shu taking the mountain pass down to the trade port, bypassing Han Gu Guan. Ah, that is a sneaky maneuver, for sure. Who's unbreakable? 
No one. I could give them Ribu's weapon, and they can be unbreakable. We got him. Mercy of the Forest. Different healing spell. One use only. 6k heal, plus 15 morale. It's weaker. It's weaker than Mending. Mending is 1.64 times, which is 6.4, plus armor and melee evasion. This is definitely weaker. It's a quicker heal. So I guess in duels, maybe it's slightly better, but aside from that, it's, it's a weaker ability. Um, hmm. This is an interesting scenario. It's not like he can beat that, but we need a general there. Administrator, right? Yes, so I guess you will have to come down over here first. No item. Alright, we're currently just using them to maintain it. It's every two turns here. We mentioned we want a state workshop. And we will get one. We're just gonna have him walk there next turn. Because I want to use all three deployments here. We're gonna use her. Because her ability is just absolutely bonkers. And... What does our wife do again? Increase speed minus morale. Ignore ground type. It's good for kiting. Can't lie about that. Maybe we can use her. Lady Duel. Debuff enemies, slow them down. Decrease their melee evasion. Also pretty damn good. Gaoshun. He's unbreakable. That's the man we need for the job. We'll take the debuff. None of them need their units. Are we inside? Yes, we are. Good. Who is going to lead? I believe he would have the highest capture chance. 9% at level 3, 6% at level 2, 5% at level 1. Alright, that's fine. We'll hold this, they will hold that, and we'll slow them down. They're spending a winter turn without replenishment, it's gonna hurt them uh, quite a bit. We have a lot of money left. Zamba. Well, we get mending from him. His background bonus is not useful for us, but it's unique. I could go for him, but I don't I don't think that's important right now. Maybe we'll have better targets after maybe say their army loses. Maybe Yan Xiang will come join us after like a heroic defeat or hero victory for us. Because it's it's definitely gonna happen. Um we upgrade this now. Seems like Tongguan should get an upgrade, and Hanguguan maybe could use one more upgrade. We might want to tone 
down the taxes a little bit. Oh, the food situation. All right. I guess we're on this boat. We're going to stay on this boat. Okay, we're fine. That's mainly a winter issue. Once we get rid of winter, I think we can downgrade. Let's uh, continue. All right. They're coming for the Valent defeat on the battle. We're going to turn around and get a victory here, obviously. Um... Picking out which items we want after the fights. Spy Master is kind of useless, good for trade. We lost is also not that good. We'll be fine. Let's go. Alrighty, we actually have more men than they do in this fight, and they have definitely shown us no respect by fighting two different ways. Look at their general's health. We're going to ignore this pile here. Like, what are they going to do? Run into a bunch of wooden stakes and kill all the horses? Meanwhile, we'll focus this group down. We get three because the bandit has the ability that gives us three. We'll test this ability out. It seems broken. We got a morale drain here as well and then we have this evas uh, this huge evasion decrease no one will duel in the beginning we'll set up our range units to fire on the enemy oh i still haven't changed the default skirmish mode i'll change that in the future Yeah, I think we're good. I'll start with you. They actually like each other, so we don't want to kill him first. Oh, just two arrows. You got shot. Immediately use that, but one second after, obviously. One second before. Wow, that is clutch. The cooldown is 15 seconds. Alright, we're gonna wait till his thing times out. Oh, we're gonna also slow them down. I'll let you shoot. Wait. Is skirmish mode on for her as well? Yes, it is. Okay, get into a fight. Now they can't move, and they lost melee evasion. It didn't hit him, but... Like I said, cooldown is really low. Fire with your regular bow. Ah, uh, the unit. Oh, he he got hit. He got hit. Okay, I was like the unit tanked most of that for him. Alright, we'll let him route because they're all re they all have relationship and uh, I don't want them to get any ideas. Uh, did we? Oops. We had no intentions of killing him. Now we have one angry boy here who's also going to die.
Will you die now? He's angry. Is he coming back? He is. You snipe him. I'll take care of the mobs. Ah, he's gonna use the ability. Four seconds, three, two, one. Ah, uh, we can't pull it off. No, still can't pull it off. What are you doing? Oh, she bugged out because this ability got cancelled? It could happen. Let's see if we can use it. Break it. Oh no, she's bugged out. Oh well. We've seen that happen with Hell of Arrows and stuff like that as well. We lost our mounts, but it's totally fine. Oh, she's just out of it. Good win for us. Now let's see if we captured anyone. Close victory, so not high percentage there. A lot of money. Intimidation didn't overflow, but close. No capture. Yan Bai Hu is fighting Wang La. Yuan Shao is fighting Wang Quan. Maybe he can wipe out Wang Quan and we can pick up the wife. Ah, the banquet event, where we hold out a feast and the entertainment is uh, different officials getting dragged on to uh, get lashed out. Um, we can actually spend intimidation here and become the beloved lord, but we don't want this public order actually. I don't want the satisfaction hit, so we can do ignore them I guess. Yeah. That would be the play here. They will both bounce back in a turn. They did a replacement general here. Hmm. Okay, we'll ignore that. Ooh, let's take a look. Ah, we can't see anything. She's also a ranged general, it seems. Zhang Liao ranked up, pick up Resolve the Righteous for the stronger enemy, so he can basically defend very well, and then we also want to get patience on him, and then he can be a defensive general for us. Li Ru, kind of unhappy now, he wants a higher core position, we can definitely give him one, he's also perceptive plus patience. 
what we can do with him is, since it's spring, give him a core position on top of that. You can become our grand director. Some food never hurts. Additional item, economy. Fatigue Genshul's army. Kill that, no, 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 we're not killing the enemy general. Let's fatigue that army. That is Genshul's army right there. Increase the garrison and public order of the capital. Increase additional builds and cheaper or quicker builds for Anting. Let's do that. Perfect. So we're going to have you finish your job here. Not Wait, can we not reach it? We can't reach it. It's got to be next turn then. I should have walked farther in because we're not doing the replacement. Um, anyways, not a big deal. We should get this one so that we can build a bunch of stuff in the capital. There's no trade partner, so that's a moot point. Yeah, there's no trade partner. And no one still wants to deal with us. We, we have dropped quite a bit of treachery, though. It will slowly go away. Okay, we have a bunch of battles coming up, right? We have so many public order issues that hmm there, there's definitely some debatable deployment right now the good thing of getting that faction council proposal Jingzhou is going to get one. Han Zhong is going to get one. So they're going to get one together. If I lower... And just rush this, food is going to be fine. That way Jingzhou gets one. But nowhere else picks up one next turn. Gives us some time to mess with deployment. Because we essentially don't have enough deployment slots. Oh, she's on assignment. And we're poor. But next turn we're, we're not going to be poor. We can summon a bunch of generals. So that's fine. So we'll have enough generals to defend this. I can move him back. So we can only summon two next turn. That would be great. Is there any chance I want to strike out at them first and just beat them, wiping them out? Or do I want them to bounce back? I don't think I want them to bounce back. I have no high hopes of grabbing them, and right now they're not on the field, so they can't actually get killed. So they'll they'll both live, I believe. Or else if they bounce back and fight me, then they will actually die. Right. Oh, and we get a capture chance on them. Oh, it is last wound. Wait, it is last wound? Hold on. If it's last wound. It will still be last wound if they bounce back. Ah. <sighs> they did it to themselves. If they die, they die. I can't do much better than this. 60%, 73%? It's not bad. Yanshu is probably going to straight up die. He's not going to work for us.
Would they be stupid enough to attack us though? That's the thing, right? Maybe... If... <sighs> We're too considerate for them. We'll let them live. We'll let them live. Is this still going to get a rebellion? Not right away. Crackdown will go away and then we'll get a rebellion. Right, we're too nice, but I think that's 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 the way things are right now. That needs a reform. Everyone is just warning me about low public water. It's just not there's not actually anything to build. Yeah, let's continue. And we're now losing supplies. Uh, Dashu's army. We can recall that one. No big deal. Once again, Tsal Tsal. Of all the factions, who could faction counsel us for something? Tsal Tsal does it. I really like Perception. And also the rule. Ooh, maybe we want to get closer to our brother, though. Yeah. Let's be friends with him since, uh, you know, he is our heir right now. We are 53. Still quite young. I think we're of a fine age. If they just allow themselves to stay on the field for two more turns, then we can pull it off. Or else... Or, or else it could be bad. <laughs> no items, nothing to worry about here. Let's get him on the field, he's relatively cheap. And let's get our wife on the field. And we'll get rid of these. We are currently at 93, so we should spend some. Let's talk to Ateng. I would like this piece of land. It's worth quite a bit to you, it seems. 30 point to Corhiers, and we can offer items. Wait, wait, I know we have item. That's currently bugged out right here. Let's go back out. Let's do it again. Ah, item's back. When did we get that silver weapon? We could definitely trade it. That's 28, coheres, and then we can pay him, basically. Pay him cash. Pick up a silk. How much cash? How does 5,000 sound? Oh, more than enough. Okay, so close to 4,000-ish. Uh, now we gotta compare that with... Han Sui's deal, because he also has a piece of silk trader that we would want. Much cheaper. Okay, much cheaper. Then we don't have to give him any items. Alright, so we're going to get this deal done first. How low can we go? Oh, nice. Yeah, I like this deal. We have a resource that will, you know, overflow if we don't use it, and we use it. We're now below 70, which is not good for us, obviously, but we have a fight queued up. That will net us 10 points. Boost us right back over. And next turn, you know, we'll drop from the decay, but then we'll have more rebel fights to fight. Perfect. Luoyang's gonna get one, but we have an army there, so we'll be fine. We will be fine. Here, undying two turns. We have an army in position. We pick this up. It's level two. We're gonna upgrade it. And let's see over here. It's still level one. I don't know why he's demanding so much for it. How about your horse pasture? as well. Hmm. 
Oh well. Uh, we'll work on it later. We'll try to grab all three silk. It'll just take a little work, but we'll we'll get there. Aside from that, looks like Zheng Jiang is expanding. We haven't taken a peek at the spot. Oh, Yan Xiang's willing. I said losing. A death of a friend is what pushed him over. Well, this is our way of rescuing him. We need money. Cancel a building. Cancel the new upgrade to the silk. That can't wait. No defense? Okay. Um, he has a spy master. Oh, spy master is uh, counter spying, right? No, it's not. It's like for his own spies. Plus 15 undercover network cost. Plus 15. Got mind be mindful of that. When we extract, it's going to be plus 15 right here. He also has Zhang Xiu, but the thing is, I can't do the action against him. I can only use it against people who are where I am. I'm currently in the army, so I can't use it on anyone else except for people in the army. It looks like Zhang Xiu is going to drop quite a bit as well. The daughter... Hua Xin also got a unique portrait. And why is Hua Xin working for Yuan Shu? Shouldn't Hua Xin be in the south? Anyways, he, he looks like he's going to leave the faction eventually. I'm going to just have to switch more points over and then wait two turns to grab him off. That's the only thing we can do to make sure the spy effect doesn't hit us. All right, and then just make sure he doesn't die in these couple turns, which we can easily do. Yeah, we'll be fine. All right. That's three characters in the bag in this episode so far. He doesn't have enough money to grab that. He would just have to simply wait maybe at the edge here. Because the supply issue is definitely something we had to pay attention to. Uh, let's continue. All right, Gong Sun and Han Fu going at it. Wei Kai, that's Jia Long's old faction, I believe, which means Wu Tu Gu has wiped them out. Diao Chan has spawned. Minister Wang Yun invites you for tea as his home. Well, there you are charmed by one of his serving girls. Asking her name, Wang Yun says the beautiful woman is called Diao Chan. It would, be on, it would honor him if you wish to add her to your household. So we're going to follow the story here. And uh, what we're going to do is make sure we don't fight over her with Lu Bu. And things will go just right for us. Let's take a peek if she got any changes. Under MTU, Deadly Beauty, that's still the same. Blossoming Beauty, that is new, I believe. I don't think I remember seeing her with this. So she has a heal ability now. It's infinite. Wait, 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 wait. Passive buff. So anyone within 100 meter of her will always heal and always reduce cooldown. That is broken. Okay, wonderful. That's the same. That's the same. That was her only unique skill, I believe. This is definitely MTU's creation here. Alright, no change to the armor. Good. Uh, the level up would not save, so we'll probably end up doing that again if we do it now. Um, we dipped. No, we're exactly at 70. We're going to be able to fight some rebels right here. No items. And wait another turn to extract him as they're bleeding out again. So there's no way they challenge us because they're just too weak at this point. So we can wait past the resiliency. We can grab him. Things are going well. We picked up three MTU characters plus Delta in this episode. His faction got wiped, but he escaped. He might have items. Let's take a quick look before we end the episode. Right, right of Joe. We'll grab him. Uh, paying a thousand to grab a silver and a common item is definitely worth it. The character, not so much. But uh, things are going well, and we're not really getting bothered by anyone except for Yuan Shu. Seems like Liu Bao saved Yuan Shu by taking out He Yi. Cao Cao is a pain. Hopefully, he marched towards us. 
Right, because we're going to be attracting a lot of attention. People are going to be marching towards us. It seems like most of the fighting is going to happen around here with the diversion towards our trade port uh, instead of coming at our passes, which it's uh, unfortunate, but something we just have to deal with. Um, yeah, so we'll probably keep an army relatively in this position in the future. I think that's going to be the goal. Maybe we can lead that venture while well, we try to take care of the you know, interior of the northwest. Uh, we're still waiting to colonize that and we'll hopefully colonize these as well. Um, we have used trade to kind of isolate Hansui, which is kind of what we want to do with Ma Teng as well. Feels like he's not expanding, so if we're able to snatch these land, we really limit him to what he can do here. So we'll try to build up our cohesion maybe by jacking up our tax rate again now that the threat is kind of gone and we can deploy a bunch of our generals. And that way we can kind of use cohesion to trade for what we want. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this so far and uh, see you guys next time. Bye.